Hey everyone, in case you didn't already know, I have partnered with Ubisoft Canada to help promote the R6 Canada Nationals. And in case you don't know about the R6 Canada Nationals, it's basically the same format as the US Nationals, but for Canadian talent. And if you don't know the US Nationals, then it's basically just Pro League for Canada. They had their first week of matches last Saturday, and I'm going to go over some of the best and worst clips from those games. The format I'm going to be running is I will let the clip run first, then I will do commentary after it while showing specific moments that I'm talking about. And unfortunately, since the game audio is mixed with the live stream commentary, I'll have to mute the game audio while I'm doing my commentary. That way our voices don't just override each other. But hopefully you guys enjoy this type of content. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more in case you like what you see. Anyways, enjoy the video. A bit more different than he usually would, especially with the barbed wire. He's going to have to un-ADS, and if he goes to punch that, it could ultimately lead to his demise. However, that will not be the case, as he's able to walk on in safe and sound. Now, this is a bunch of intel being relayed. Oh, wow. Lion going to come in. Now, he's mostly going to get picked off right here. Wow. Oh, my goodness gracious. A beautiful shot. Hickser landing the shot onto Euphoria, and a little bit of assistance coming out here from the Kaedis. He will be able to rotate his position and therefore challenge the Montana Whiskers, who is currently alone. On the other side of things, though, Lion. Yep. Making his presence known as, uh... Oh, oh Whiskers! <gasps> Whiskers punished, able to take yeah. out one. That was an extremely good play. Being able to take out the Kaid for nullifies his ability to Kaitrix, so that's going to be quite interesting coming down into the final, uh... Final entry push, not the final entry push, but um, rather the mid-round adaptation. Yeah, the minute and a half, you know, we're coming into this mark now, and we're into a three-on-three -three situation. Whiskers likely shouldn't have been able to get that kill, but hey, yeah. I mean, you pull down the Monty shield, you hit a headshot like that, you take those. So he's going to be very, very happy. Brian already a kill under his belt, and so he's going to be now looking into this garage. A lot of deaths happen in this garage, but surprisingly, one of them, not the Maestro. Hicks playing in this position would usually be one beginning in gunfights down here, but it seems like he did want to back off. Now in an engagement with the Lion, doing a little bit of damage to Brian, he just backs on off. It'll be Frosty, the next one to fall, the partner of Hicks, who is somewhere else on the map. And with Evil Waffle getting that headshot, he can just go over the entry. A minute on that clock will get off of it. He's just faking. They've got that information from the Twitch drone. This is huge. Pyrex ended up taking down Evil Waffle, though, so maybe not necessarily looking where he was going. Bossy's trying to plan. It's a two on two, and still, O'Brien is trying to get into this garage. Hicks still trying to fight him. Again, he doesn't necessarily need to get this kill, just needs to pump some damage into him, buy his teammates some time. It's essentially two separate 1v1s going on right now. Brian stepping into Goomine hurts him a lot. He's down with 25 HP, not going to be favored. Hicks coming around now, is able to get another kill onto Jarvis, leaving it all to Brian, pushing through Garage. They know exactly where he's at. This is such a tough spot to push into. The angles are going to be covered. you got to pick up that diffuser and plant if you can't find both of these frags. Again, the Maestro just buying his time. Hicks playing so smart and so slow here. Eventually peaks it and loses his life. Now it's dangerous. Pyrex, the last man standing. Now, do they know where he's at? Brian knows exactly where he's at. He can hit this headshot. No, he won't. Pyrex clutches it. And Looney Tunes actually took the first round. Just a heads up, I'm going to be using operator names instead of player names just to make it a bit easier to follow in case you don't know the player names. But first I want to highlight the amazing hold by Maestro in Garage. Generally with the Monty pushing this is incredibly hard to hold, but he played it well knowing that Monty was not close enough to actively try to kill him so he just kept his eyes on the back by Garage Ramp. He managed to get a quick pick on Zofia and both him and Kade decided to be aggressive and push up on Monty into the corner. This was a kind of dangerous play because if someone else had been coming down Garage Ramp, they could have possibly got the kill Maestro and then easily gotten the kill on Cade. However, it did pan out because even though Monty managed to kill Cade, Maestro easily traded out Monty. And Monty was in a really bad position here. I'm sure he didn't expect Zofia to die in the back, but since he was all alone, he couldn't unshield to go back through the Garage Ramp and he was just stuck in that corner. And since there was no one else to help him, he had no other option but to try to go for a kill and at least go even. Fast forward to the site, we have a very questionable play by Team Canada. Hibana starts the plant and then stops as soon as Legion starts firing at her. And instead of trying to find a safer corner to plant in, decides to repeat Legion and dies. And during all of this, instead of Twitch pushing up to kill Legion or Maestro who's still in Garage, they're just sitting on their drone actively marking Legion. Now this wouldn't be a huge issue if you didn't already have two dead teammates who could be marking on that drone for you. She could have just pushed up and got the kill. So two big misplays there that led to Looney Tunes having the advantage in the fight. And then when it moves to the 2v1, Maestro makes a big mistake by trying to peek the Lion coming from Garage. There really was no reason for him to peek. He was sitting in a safe spot, he could have just sat there and waited for the push, but instead tried to actively push out and get the kill. And then at the end of the round, Lion, probably panicking because so little time and no diffuser, was trying to push into sight, misses a pretty easy kill on Legion, and Looney Tunes wins out the round. 
They're into the bomb set already. There goes a C4. No, that was just a goo mine. Excuse me. A line charge will make everybody stand still for a couple of seconds. But they're back. Now green light again. They can move. I expected this match to be honestly a lot more aggressive. But Team Canada, when they have the opportunity to push, they've been taking it very, very slowly. Phoenix saw somebody out inside in the lobby for a minute. He's given up his position inside of elevators by shooting that, but got the down onto Brian. Easily picked up by his teammates, but he'll still be on very little HP. So that's still going to be a win for the roamer hiding inside of elevators. Euphoria has his number. But again, you really got to push that if you're Phoenix. Probably aren't going to have the information of where Euphoria is playing, but if you're able to just sit in here, waste that uh, Zofia's time, that's going to be good. Jarvis opens things up here, actually on top of Skylight, so way off away from the bomb site. He's able to find the Kaid. That's a big play. Maybe caught him off guard. Didn't quite see it, but either way, that's going to be a big player. He was the one who died earlier in the round last time, too. The plant going down in a lion charge as well, with nine players still alive. Evil Waffle, is he going to get this down? 15 seconds to go. Well, a couple of kills will come down to cover for him, but yes, he will be able to plant that diffuser. A fury of frags come in now, and there's only two members on Team Canada. One a support, and the other with a shield in his hands. This is still going to be a quite difficult hold with three full health players over on the side of Looney Tunes. Make it two. Phoenix catches a bullet from Evil Waffle, and now they're at even strength, trying to get on in. They are getting the counter deep. He was oh. a great kill from Evil Waffle. That's two in his pocket. It's going to be all into a maestro to clutch. He needs to do this. He just needs to hold on for a few seconds of the Montaigne being his best <laughs> distraction he can possibly be. Evil Waffle now wants to be able to get in and find this kill at some point in time, and he will find it. <laughs> Team Canada strike back. We're in an even match. This round is basically the exact inverse of the last round, where Looney Tunes fucked up a decent amount and Team Canada capitalized on those mistakes. They only had one person defending the archive site, and he was easily killed by Twitch, who was the only one pushing over there. Then they're left with four people essentially watching one bomb site from almost the exact same angle. Elevator, stairs, on site, and then close to open area office. And since the attackers know this, they easily capitalize on it and plant on site with two big misplays from the defending team. One, there was a Maestro turret watching Hibana. This should have been easily called out by Cade since he's dead and on cameras. Two, the cubicle wall is still up, making it harder for Legion to see exactly where Hibana's planting. This should have been destroyed early on because it would easily allow them to see right where the default plant spot is. And then Jaeger comes in through the main lobby trying to flank the attackers, but gets too focused and tunnel visioned on the Monty. Monty's a shield, he's staying full shield, you don't have to worry about him, focus on the other attacker who can't kill you. But instead, Jaeger sees a slight opportunity to maybe kill Monty and focuses deadly on it. It ends up costing him his life and basically the round, since Hibana then rotates around to the door and kills one of the remaining defenders through the cubicle wall, which I said they should have destroyed in the first place, easily showing how impactful that cubicle wall is if it's destroyed. And then this next part, Monty plays absolutely perfectly. I know a lot of Montys in ranked who will get very greedy and aggressive in a 1v1 situation and try to either melee or hip fire for the kill, just so they can have a kill. But this Monty plays it perfectly and just stays right up against Maestro's face, does not let him do anything other than see him, but also doesn't get greedy trying to go for the kill. He just sits and waits patiently. Makes the call for Hibana, Hibana gets the kill. Easy win for Team Canada. They played it perfectly and capitalized on all the mistakes that Looney Tunes made. So two on five ensues. Make that a two on four. As Wizard's going to land a shot onto... Oh my god, Euphoria is just going in. He's going all the way into Yellow Staircase. He's going to land a headshot. Frosty's going to take one out of Whiskers. And that leaves Euphoria in a one on three situation. Most likely going to get caught off guard here as someone is within piano. Shots will be land into each other, but not a single one connecting. One connecting into Euphoria, he will decide to rotate back down the staircase to see if anyone's getting aggressive on his point. Meanwhile, Soul on the vigil. 100 HP, will he land the headshot? No, he will not! Euphoria! Headshot onto Soul. 2v1 scenario ensues as there is 30 seconds left on the clock, deciding to go for the wall bang, but not landing remotely close to where that player needed to be. Deciding to take that gunfight onto Smoke. No Make way. that a 1v1. Euphoria, oh, triple no. kill on the round. Will need a 4k to win this for his team. Diffuser, not enhanced. Deciding to rotate back out there, most likely will be intel on his rotate, judging as there is an evil eye still on the board. Coming down to the final 15 seconds, Will the most right decide to play passive and play on his camps. Euphoria is most likely need to take that out if he chooses to go for a plant. Plant or push uh... will be the decision. Will it be plant or will it be push? Euphoria deciding to push, but ultimately proving unsuccessful as the maestro is playing inside the hallway and out of the line of sight. I really like this clip because it's a great example of playing passive versus playing aggressive. Here Ash starts in a 1v4 situation, quickly brings it down to a 1v3, 
and then I'm down to a 1v2 after she realizes someone's in piano and kills his Vigil. Vigil's playing a little needlessly aggressive because it's a 1v3 situation. He could have easily rotated back through Visa stairs or Spiral stairs, gone back in sight, and they've had three people sitting there waiting for Ash. There's only 30 seconds left on the clock, and a diffuser's down on site with a Maestro camera watching it. He does not need to push. But instead he pushes, dies, 1v2. The attackers have a drone on smoke. He panics, goes towards Yellow Pillar, gets spotted, and Ash shoots him through the floor. Now it's a 1v1. Realistically, in all that situation, Smoke should have just rotated to Kitchen, sat behind there. The roof wasn't really broken. He could hide easily. They have a master camera on the diffuser. He doesn't need to peek. But he got picked off because he was in a bad spot. And now it's a 1v1. All those guys are playing needlessly aggressive. Maestro's left to just clutch it out. He plays incredibly passive, except for one minor mistake. For some reason, he starts reloading his LMG. This could be a spectator bug. I don't think it is. I think he generally was trying to reload his LMG, but that drew a lot of noise and attention towards him. Luckily, Ash prefired the wrong spot and didn't get the kill, but that reloading animation and sound could have easily got him killed. But overall, still kudos to him for playing way more passively than the rest of his team. And if he had played aggressively, he could have easily lost, and it would have been a 1v4 loss. Boy, if they're able to catch him out, that's going to be a disaster. Evil Waffle getting another hit shot on the Pyrex, but we're going back and forth. This has just been a teeter-totter of a round. So important for Looney Tunes. Again, they lose this. They're out of stage one. you got to come back in stage number two if you want to qualify for EGLX in Toronto at the end of October. It's such an important land oh. for these teams. Frosty shuts down Evil Waffle. You just got to find Brian. He started this round off strong for Team Canada. He needs to close it as well, and there is not a ton of time um, that have expired. So there's a lot still on the clock that Looney Tunes can play with. That's great for them. Brian needs to be able to clutch this. He got to get the kills. You cannot just wait this out. More than likely, Looney Tunes makes something happen. He goes for the push. It's being watched, but he hits the headshot anyways. It's a one on one. Brian with three. He needs to find the fourth one. Soul going for the plant. Again, tons of time. He does not need to do this right now, but that makes it unexpected. Brian's going to be able to realize that this is happening. Doesn't seem like they necessarily have the information. No, they do not. The fuse are planted. Matt Clock's got a whole lot shorter, oh, but he hits the shot. God. Doesn't even matter. Brian with a 4K. He sends Team Canada to the semifinals of stage number one. Huge play coming up from him, putting Looney Tunes into the ground. So it's a 1v2 situation for Doc. Jacko and Hibana have sight. Hibana's close to admin with Doc and decides to rotate around so they can actually go for the plant. Jacko hides in the corner between connector room and long hallway. But while he's there, he's being spotted non-stop by the Maestro camera. Keep in mind, he'd been sitting there for a few seconds before Doc started pushing. And Hibana had just recently left Adamant and a new Doc was still in there. Jackal had time to relocate, but instead of relocating, he decides to hold that corner while being spotted constantly. This allows Doc to get the easy pick onto him. This leaves Hibana in a 1v1 situation, who actually plays a pretty smart and plants next to a reinforced wall so he can't be shot. Now the shitty situation for Hibana is that since Doc knew where she planted, she has to move out and relocate. But there aren't many options for her. So she relocates, pushing out through the middle of the room, and Doc just manages to get the kill and win out the round. So had Hibana and Jackal coordinated that a decent amount better, they probably could have planted and both been holding inside console office. There was no reason for Jackal to hold that corner of the hallway. He had time to get back into the site and wait. But unfortunately, Doc just managed to pick them off one by one. Most teams want to do. They're just going to sit back and let Supernova come to them. And Supernova have not been extremely quick at it. Now they're opening up the wall that they need to get into to try to plant. Oh but a big C4 God. comes from Max. 2K takes care of Jims and Vix. That's two great operators off of the board. Jims for the gun. And of course, Vix for that support. Oh man, you don't like to see that if you're a fan of Supernova. So I really, really like this clip because it just shows how 200 IQ Cade was. The wall is reinforced from Armory looking towards 90 corner. Normally people don't reinforce that because the defender can make a hole there and easily peek through the hallway. But since it's reinforced, it gives the attackers a sense of security that they won't be shot and that they can hide in that hallway. Once the wall is breached, Cade knows that they're not going to be in moto drop because they have an angle on moto drop, they could easily kill them. So instead of positioning themselves in moto drop, they move over to the 90 corner of the hallway. They're safe since the wall is reinforced and they don't have to worry about being pushed because they have the advantage. So since Cade knows how they're going to reposition, he just throws in the C4 and gets the easy double. So 
this is just a perfect example of situational awareness and as well as perfect planning from the defender's side. Had they not reinforced that wall, the attackers probably would have pushed more into Moto Drop, or at least one of them would have, and held an angle from there. Oh, Jim's kicking one. Delta looking for another one to try to answer on back. Supernova took a long time in this round. They'll eventually lose Jim's, but it seems like they've sort of found their footing. Again, though, the clock not going to be on their favor. Maybe LSG is, though. A double kill for him in this round. He's going to come up against oh. Lackey, who hits those, let me tell you. Answers the double with his own double, and now he's going to be on the hunt, actually moving up towards that top floor. Finds a Valkyrie cam. That's a good one to be able to find. Nivek is able to push on through the garage here and create another angle that his teammates can count on for him to watch. Lackey hits that one. A trip kill for him and now he's got to be able to stop this diffuser from being planted that's already been oh a failure God, he's gotten lackey. four lackey just needs to push out on the balcony he'll be able to get one more kill on a vix and that'll be the ace for him oh, oh, gun fight. but he's gonna get it one way or another he goes to the disable again he doesn't even need a team this boy stepping oh. up in honor going four two to the split so i'm sure you can see why i added this clip lackey got an ace as jaeger and one that i'm pretty surprised he got to be honest there's about one minute left in the round, and Jaeger and Valkyrie are still roaming in the basement with no one else on site. Sledge pushes down trying to clear them out. Jaeger kills him. Now everyone knows that they're downstairs. Hibana relocates to blue stairs. Jaeger knows that she's going to be waiting for him because obviously they know they're down there. Gets ready and shoots as soon as he sees Hibana. That right there was just a great display of situational awareness and getting ready to shoot. And then I really like this next play because it shows the callouts that were being made by his team and, and how he knew where people were. You can see for a split second there that someone was on the Valkyrie camera, probably marking or at least calling out that someone was in garage, so Jaeger knows the call for someone in there. But as he pushes up the main staircase, he knows two of them are on balcony because they've breached in through the wall. So he goes through the rotate hole and just barely sees someone's head. He knows someone's stone garage, so gets ready and just holds the angle. Waits for them to peek him, gets another kill. Last one's obviously on Belk, because if you are going to plant a diffuser in server, you have to have someone outside waiting for them to start diffusing it. He goes out, ready to aim, knows exactly where he is, pre-fires, gets the kill, secures the ace. So overall, this was just a great display of situational awareness and knowing where to aim, as well as great callouts from his teammates and probably even better positioning for Valkyrie cameras. But he was able to process that information and get those kills that he needed to win what was, for a split second, a 2v5 maximum and he is very much having a bad time inside of garage from oh, all the way inside oh, of cctv lackey. a lot of damage it'll be jims who ends up finishing off another player lacking on this side of the building but delta's still alive and he's still trying to challenge in on team the there's a couple players in the bomb site gen Wait, Chow is what? planting what? vix is what? still getting kills but he probably what? should get off that plan <laughs> no he's not going to and Yvek will peek on in and get a 2k uh, okay. for his troubles <laughs> This clip I mainly would just want to highlight the big mistake made by Honor, but I can also kind of explain why this mistake was made. So the big fuck up was Thermite trying to go for the plant while Echo is still in Garage. I'm sure most of you are probably scratching your head at that thinking, what could he possibly be thinking? Why is he going for a plant? Jaeger managed to get the kill on Buck going up through Garage stairs. So Echo didn't land any shots, they didn't know Echo was sitting there. Obviously they should still assume someone's sitting there, but they didn't know it. And then Echo also tried to land a few shots on Thermite, but missed. A lot of them hit the railing, but I think one or two might have hit the wall. But thanks to that silencer, they didn't hear him there. Or see the bullet tracers. So as far as Thermite's aware, he's perfectly safe to plant everyone's in cash or on stairs. But even then, in a 2v5 situation, it is very, very scary to try to plant like that. It ended up completely biting them in the ass because Echo was just sitting in garage and could easily get the kill, leaving Thatcher to just basically die in a 1v5. So while on the face this clip does look like just a huge fuck up by honor, it is pretty easy to see how it could have fallen through the cracks, especially in a stressful situation like that. Five on three now, you can see he died inside a moto. You got a couple of more players you're trying to get in, but these walls are just not being opened up. If they've been banded, oh, they're Tao. staying there. A good entry from Gen Tao, of course, a little bit strange. You see a Thermite get in the entry into the bomb site, but whatever you can, utilize oh, your Gen tools. Gen Tao with the double. Two Plank for him, down. and now he's going for this plan. As you mentioned, five seconds has been very late. They need to cover for him. They're worried about somebody up above, but nobody's there. Can they be able to kill the planter? Yes, they can. A headshot, but it's just too late. Also, the Habana sold so low. LSG being one kill, but will it be enough? You've got three guys still on the board trying to take down a Sledge and a Habana. Things are slow. 
They don't want to make any wrong move on either side. It'll be Kozak who missteps and on so little HP. That's a tough one to try to lose. Put things all on the shoulders of Delta. Now he's had to hold off against three very strong anchors. You still got to smoke. You still got Nyvek relaying information. There's a lot they can do. And Jim's is a great gun. LSG starts that disable. Delta needs to stop it. Does he have the angle? He does. But does he be able to stay alive? Looks like he will. He has the time in his favor. SMG 11 in hand. Now they go for another disable. Can he rotate around and stop it? Doesn't look like he's hurt it. And can he get it? Oh, can he get it? Headshots. No! That's unfortunate oh, and Supernova no! just get the disable. If he was able to get oh. that, that would have been it. But Before we get into the 1v3 clutch section of this clip, I do just want to say kudos to Hibana because she searched high and low disregarding her own safety to get that last yokai while Thermite was planting. And you can see for a split second in the clip, Echo had just gotten on that drone right before Hibana destroyed it. So had Hibana not been looking for it, the plant would have been denied, and the defenders could have possibly won without the plant going down. So kudos to them. But then after destroying the yokai, Hibana gets downed, Thermite gets killed, and it's a 1v3 situation for Sledge. The defenders are playing it pretty smart with Echo droning out everything to make sure that Sledge is not by 90 Hall or by Moto Drop, and they clear out that area. No one gets any intel on Blue, but it's safe to assume that they just assumed that he was in there after droning out everything else. And since it's a 1v3 situation, the defenders have the numbers on their side, so Smoke pushes up, sacrificing his life to try to deactivate the diffuser. Sledge played it really risky here by going up to the rotate hole because it was very easy for him to get killed either by Echo through the wall or even Doc if Doc had been holding an angle from hallway. Instead, he could have easily pre-fired through the wall since he knows where the diffuser is and also that wall was soft to the left of him but instead he kept pushing to that hole. And then when he kills Smoke, it's a 1v2 situation. I think this is where Echo kind of fucked up a bit. Echo probably could have just pushed into blue and tried to put pressure on Sledge while Doc went for the defuse, but instead Echo pushes around to the hallway. But in the end, that actually confused Sledge more, and Sledge focused way too much on Echo and not on the defuse. Had he just focused Doc by, again, peeking through that soft wall, he could have easily got the kill, and that would have left Echo in an unwinnable situation. They would have had no time to defuse, Sledge would have won it, and they would have stayed in the match. But instead, he gets too distracted by the second person. Realistically, in a situation like this, as the last remaining attacker with the defuser down, you should put your life completely off to the side and just go for the kill. Don't worry about staying alive. If they deactivate the defuser, you lose. You have to commit to trying to get the kill there, especially with so little time. Overall, still a great play by the attacking team, but wasn't enough. We're going on into the site now. I believe they're going to try and go for a Montane plant, so they're going to disable that evil eye, okay? Nevek is going to shoot it, and then they're going to try and mostly go for a plant from there. So Delta, if I were him, I would try and impact from below and see if he can get the shot onto Vix. However, that's not going to be the case, as the Montane plant will come down, impact a little bit too late, and Vix will be able to escape with his life. Five on five, plan down. I can't tell you how many times we rarely have ever seen that. Kozak's going to be extremely aggressive, deciding to not gas out the Montane. Extremely interesting. He's going to go for the shot onto the Zofia, however, not being able to land the kill. Oh, he sees the Lex. Can he land the shot? Hello? No, he will not. Oh, no. Ah! Hello? <laughs> A little bit of an awkward engagement. Four on five ensues. Delta trying to aggress up. We stairs will not be the case. Max landing one headshot onto Jims. Being able to res his teammate, Max. Getting taken out. Vix followed by another one in Vec. One on four. Four Lackey gets one. Will he be able to close it out? Most likely not as the time is ticking down. And Sophia being able to land the last shots. Not necessarily with his gun, but rather with his concussion grenades. Follow up by LSG. Hit firing with the Montan. Actually, I think he ABS him here, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, he hit fired him. This clip is pretty interesting because it's a very rare situation, like the commentator said. A 5v5, all 10 players alive, and the diffuser goes down. Not something you would ever expect. And I think a lot of this boils down to Smoke's positioning. I'm sure it wasn't a personal choice, I'm sure this was a team call of where to play smoke, but he was in the wrong spot. That or his smoke canister was just way off. Unfortunately we can't see it in the clip, so I'm not entirely sure where the smoke was thrown or how it was thrown, but it completely missed Monty and Thermite. The plant went down and the defenders were just left scrambling. They had absolutely nothing they could do. When you have a diffuser down and Monty just saying they're watching it, especially with all five attackers still sitting there watching the diffuser now, it's going to be impossible to win. And like the commentator said, Legion could have impacted from below to try to kill the Monty, but it was far too late. 
He was not in position to do that, and by the time it was called, they already had the diffuser down. So the big misplay here was just smoke positioning. Had smoke been at the metal half wall, which is where I think Maestro was, he could have easily thrown the smoke canisters much more accurately and stopped the plant from going down. And at the same time, probably done a lot of damage to Monty so they couldn't keep doing the same play over and over again. Ben said he was positioned behind the archives desk, which just overall I can't quite say was a great play. Now to be fair, it is possible to get the smoke canister in the proper position from behind the archives desk, but either he didn't know how to do it or he missed it. Because if he'd done it properly, they definitely would not have gotten that plant down. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, now, I like that. Ooh, you know, they take a, that might be a little bit of an first. early firebolt. I would not have recommended that go out. Not to mention he missed it. So that's uh, I, I, a bit questionable there. Again, you have to notice that maybe that hasn't been necessarily tried out with it all. This is going to be a beautiful play. Blackbeard off the board. Max trying to get another one onto the entry fragging person within Bakery. He's going to get pushed. Take it out. LSG. Entry fragging with the cap down, taking down another one, Ash followed by Vix. Lackey with another one onto Vix, getting the refrag. Gentile following up on Fruiter. Two on two situation, resolving within these first couple minutes. Now, 40 seconds left on the clock. Most likely going to take their time, regather the information, find out where these players are playing, and trying to play it to fruition. C4 is mostly going to come out from Delta. Can he land it? No, he will not. Now, he's not going to decide to blow it yet. He's inside to save it, maybe mess with their audio, perhaps, and potentially just take a little bit of a take, breather, be passive, and see how they can potentially play this. It does appear that Nivek has the future, so he's going to go for the plan. Oh, no, Ellis, she's actually been down. Nivek's going to have to frag out if he tries to win this round. Lands one onto Valkyrie. 1v1 situation as two players are currently down from each side. Gentile, last one alive. Nivek. Playing KD right now, he's mostly going to try and push this cap down. Can he get the kill? Zero seconds left on the clock, and that means that Honor Esports defending the bomb sites of Kitchen, and they will be going in with their heads high. This was a pretty intense round for trade-offs, back and forth, back and forth, going until it was a 1v1 situation. And in the end, I think the entire round was lost for the attackers because Zofia just did not stick the plant. We don't know the entire situation because we don't know where the Valkyramas were or if there were anyone actively calling out slash spotting where Zofia was, but it's pretty safe to assume that Zofia was in a fairly safe situation to plant, could easily plant behind that table and be safe from Castle. But instead, Zofia decided to go for the frag instead of the plant, and it cost them the entire round. In a situation like this, you really got to commit to the plant. I know it's 7 seconds and you're pretty vulnerable in a 1v1, but Castle is not going to push up until he knows for sure that the plant is going down, and even then, you have enough time to stick it. I think Zofia was also kind of worried because Castle did pre-fire a few shots over by the corner, but they wouldn't have come close to hitting her, especially if she planted a little bit more forward behind both of the kitchen countertops, whatever you want to call them. And the amount of time it would have taken Castle to push up to her, she would have had more than enough time to jump off the diffuser or stick it and then wait and hold. I'm like Mira. Wow. Yeah. So three on five looms. With a minute and 25 seconds left in this round, it is possible to solidify your position within the site. Oh, no. Oh, no. The pulse down below. This could potentially. Pings. Yeah, that's a lot of pings, dude. If he plays his cards right. I've said that so many times. Wow, there's a lot of cards. There's multiple <laughs> decks at this point. <laughs> he could potentially get not only one pick, but two picks. Keep in mind, yes, he can use C4, but he also has a gun. He can potentially wall bang from below. But what I'm really focused <laughs> I was about to say, you know what's really concerning? That Maestro hasn't been spotted out yet. But spotted out he has, as he's able to align his sights and take out Lackey. Speaking of Delta, though, well, he weren't speaking of him, but speaking of the attacking lineup, Delta will be taken out, and a little bit of a hiccup right there, seeing as that that man advantage has been a little bit of thwarted out, seeing as that Delta has been down, but he will be picked up to around 20 HP, so he will still be useful. Jims might be getting a little bit aggressive right here. Completely counteracting what we're talking about as a non-aggressive team, Jims might be just making his way upstairs and will play into his favor. Oh, okay. Yes, it will! Delta caught off guard! Jims tries to land the shots onto another one, but he will not land it. EE1D gets used, and here comes the plan. 20 seconds. This might just be in the event right here. Honor Esports would love to get this down, and they will. Oh, that gets planted, but come around Fruiter. as Fruiter. Shut down Gentile. If they get this one kill and kick it disabled, they'll get it. That's, That's going to be it, it. Supernova moving on to the semifinals where they will play against Team Canada. So for the last clip, we're going to go over how Supernova managed to clutch a 3v5 situation against Honor. Things start off pretty good for the attackers. They think they're going to win because it's a 5v3 situation, which in most cases is pretty winnable. 
But then Maestro gets a pick on Sledge, who I think was dropping through Electrical Hatch. I'm not entirely sure. And then all the focus is put on Maestro. However, a crucial mistake happens, is that earlier in the round, they had droned out Mozzie in the corner next to Maestro. So they should know that two people are up there. But then as they start pushing him, Buck gets downed through a long angle from the bar all the way to the bathroom. And then Hibana pushes him through Whitehall through the double door. Forgetting that Mozzie was there, Mozzie gets an easy kill with the knife and then drops while panic c 4 Maestro gets picked off, but that basically just turned an easy 5v3 into a 3v2, with Buck being down and only at 20 HP. Either someone not making the call or Hibana completely forgetting that Mozzie was there turned the entire tide. And then another fuck up was that the attackers didn't spend a single second of the round trying to find out where Pulse was. Pulse sat and trained for the entire round. No one droned him out. No one tried to look for him. He just sat there and scanned. He had no issues going about living his life down there. And Mozzie slow pushes back up white, even though the attacker should know that upstairs is now clear of Mozzie. Buck is not looking at white stairs and instead is looking at the white hallway corridor, and Mozzie just picks him off. So another mishap here is that the attackers didn't call the fact that Mozzie dropped. That should have been an easy call out seeing as how someone was actively pushing him while he dropped through the hatch. There was no reason for him to be looking at the upper bar area. This brings it to a 2v2, and then the attackers realize, wait, we haven't seen Pulse this entire round, and by the time Lion turns to pay attention to him, it's too late, Pulse is pushed up, it's a 2v1, Thatcher has the diffuser down, has to leave the room because he's fucked otherwise, and gets killed. And Supernova wins the match. But those either lack of communication or unawareness just completely cost Honor the entire match. What should have been an easy 5v3 turned out to be an easy loss for them. So this will conclude analysis of week 1. This is my first ever analysis video, so I'm a little rusty at this. I'm trying to find out exactly what works and the best way to go about this, so please leave any feedback down below. And like I said at the beginning of the video, please let me know if you want to see any more. I'd be happy to do this for week 2, 3, or 4, depending on my schedule. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and like I said, this is all from the R6 Canada Nationals. If you guys want to watch more of this, week two will be starting live on Twitch at the Rainbow Six channel at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I should be around and chat while it's happening, so if you want, you can come chat with me live on that Twitch channel and talk about what's happening in the match. Should be a fun time. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.